Welcome to Tessel Bytes, where we serve you GIS in small bytes. Today I'll be covering multivariate clustering in ArcGIS Pro. This is the second part of multivariate clustering demo. Previously, we explored the functioning of this tool for finding clusters of features based on their attribute values. We investigated the county level dataset for COVID cases and few vulnerability indicators for the state of Texas in United States. In this demo, we will dig a little deeper to get some basic understanding of the charts and statistics that we came across while running this tool. The video will make more sense if you have already watched the first part and if not, I will suggest you to take a quick moment to check it out. So without wasting time, let's start with the first result that we can review. Open the messages tab from the geoprocessing results window and review the table. When you run the tool, an R square value is computed for each variable and reported in the messages window. Here you will notice that the population density has the highest R square value of 0.73 indicating that this variable divides the counties into clusters most effectively. This value reflects how much of the variation for a particular variable was retained after the clustering process. So the larger the R square value, the better that variable is at discriminating among your features. Now let's talk about selecting the right number of variables that you think will distinguish one cluster of features from another. Sometimes you may know the number of clusters most appropriate for your problem, but in many cases you won't have any criteria for selecting a specific number of clusters. In such a situation, you can leave the number of clusters parameter blank and let the tool assess the effectiveness of dividing your features into 2, 3, 4 and up to 30 clusters. The clustering effectiveness is measured using the pseudo F statistic, which is a ratio of variance between clusters to the variance within a cluster. Let's open and understand the chart displaying the pseudo F statistic values. Notice that the highest peak on the graph indicates how many clusters will be most effective at distinguishing the specified variables. Here the F statistics associated with three clusters is highest with a value of 63.7. Thus, choosing three clusters is most appropriate in this case. Finally, let's understand how to interpret the main box plot graphical output. Box plots are used to show the information about both the characteristics of each cluster as well as characteristics of each variable used in the analysis. This figure shows how to interpret box plots and their summary values of each analysis field and clusters created. The middle line represents the median of the data, which means Half the values are below it and half the values are above it. The upper line of the box is the third quartile or Q3, which means 25% of the data lies above this line and 75% below it. Similarly, the lower line of the box is called first quartile or Q1, which means 75% data lies above this mark and 25% lies below it. The box represents the interquartile range also abbreviated as IQR. It covers the middle 50% of the data set and can be calculated by subtracting Q1 from Q3. It can also be said that the data inside IQR is less affected by the outliers. These are the fences or whiskers of the box plot. Upper quartile plus one and a half times IQR or lower quartile minus one and a half times IQR represents the maximum and minimum values of the datasets. Any values beyond these are considered outliers and are plotted outside the whiskers. It's also good to have an understanding of how to determine the skewness in data. A positively skewed data is one where Q3 extends further out of the median and there is a large tail on right towards Q3. The other way goes for the negatively skewed data distribution. Let's use this knowledge to interpret the resulting parallel box plot chart that summarizes both the clusters and the variables within them. The multivariate clustering tool was run on Texas counties to create four clusters. The data is standardized for all variables in order to do a meaningful comparison. We notice that the cluster 2 in red color reflects the four counties, namely Dallas, Fort Worth, Harris, and Bear, with close similarities in their attributes. Notice the position of red dots on the trend line for different variables. Cluster 2 contains counties with above average crowdedness and percent vaccinated population compared to the other clusters. This cluster also depicts the highest values 
for COVID cases and population density. Interestingly, the person poverty and person smoking population in this cluster is close to median. Looking at this global box plot graph, we notice that the distribution of data in population density and person crowdedness is positively skewed. For person vaccinated population and NO2 pollution, the data looks negatively skewed. As we have touched upon all the basic interpretations for this tool, I will summarize this demo by saying that these graphs may provide a glimpse into a large number of variables influencing a cluster and help distill them into a smaller number that might reveal hidden patterns. This has been Tessel Bytes, where we serve you GIS in small bytes. Thank you for watching and please be sure to visit us at www.tessellations.us. Also, subscribe and ring that bell.